Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here with another one of those Battlefield Hardline weapon guides. And in this video, I'll be going over the old-fashioned semi-auto M1 carbine. The M1 was originally the standard US firearm in World War II, until it was later replaced with the fully automatic M16 during Vietnam, though it's still in use by some military and police forces around the world today. Costing a grand total of $66,000, the M1 can be used by anyone on any loadout as both the law enforcement and criminal factions can use it on any of their kits. It came out for Battlefield Hardline at the same time as the Robbery DLC, though just like a lot of the guns in the patch, it doesn't require you to own the DLC. So the M1 is free for everyone, just so long as you have enough in-game cash to buy it. If you're wondering how the weapon's recoil fares, it's not brilliant, but it's not bad either. Though it's quite predictable, so you don't have to worry about it too much. It's got an upwards kick of 0.33, a leftwards kick of 0.01, and a rightwards kick of minus 0.01. So its vertical recoil is generally higher than the SMGs, but lower than the assault rifles. But do bear in mind that each shot will have a 2.5 times multiplier added on there too. So on paper, the M1 isn't exactly a perfectionist stream. Though it's still not as bad as the dreaded semi-auto sniper's recoil patterns. At least you don't have to worry about any horizontal drifting. Anyway, onto the weapon's positive points. One thing it does really well is its reloads. To change magazines, it's only going to take you 1.9 seconds with bullets still left over. This is really quick and beats the majority of the other guns in the game. It's got a time of 2.5 seconds with a reload running on empty. So this is also pretty quick where compared to most of the other weapons. And because the M1 fires in a semi-automatic mode, you'll likely find that you can conserve ammo a lot easier, as you'll only be firing one shot at a time, limiting the amount of ammo you'd normally waste if it was a fully automatic. Another good thing about the M1 is its maximum damage. Looking at the graph, we can see that the gun's got a maximum damage of 34 up to 30 meters, and a minimum damage of 15 at 60 meters. So at closer to medium ranges, the M1 can be a very deadly weapon in the right hands. It can kill another guy in just 3 bullets up to about 30 meters away, which when compared with most of the other guns is quite good. Though I'm going to keep that graph up just for a little bit longer because this also shows one of the M1's biggest weaknesses, its range. It might deal a lot of damage at close to medium ranges, but stray just a tad beyond this, and you'll find that the gun could take up to 7 bullets to kill at a distance. Its minimum damage is just 15, which is really quite low, and with the M1 being a semi-auto, it's not going to spit out bullets like there's no tomorrow. Instead, it'll just fire them one by one, or as fast as you can pull the trigger, up to about 850 RPM. Precisely firing 7 bullets at an enemy over distance with a semi-auto weapon isn't exactly an easy thing to do and you'll probably just get outgunned by someone who can fire a steady stream of lead from an assault rifle. And don't even think about taking a sniper on with the M1, unless you fancy yourself a challenge. Although the M1 looks like it's capable of being a long distance weapon, don't be fooled. It's not a sniper, and it'd be much easier to burst and tap fire in a gun with higher minimum damage and better range. Another negative thing that I should say about the weapon, which actually kind of links in with my recommended attachments, is the lack of them. The M1 only has three attachments, the stock, stubby grip and flash hider, so you better get used to those iron sights. These attachments do improve the weapon and you're definitely best adding them on as soon as you get them, as the stock will help stabilise the gun when you tap that trigger fast. The stubby grip will also help lowering that spread increase per shot from 0.2 to 0.1, and the flash hider will get rid of that muzzle flash, helping to conceal your shots more and lose some of that distracting glare when you shoot. These are the only attachments for the M1, and although they do improve the weapon, there isn't really much variety here, so you won't be able to lower that first shot multiplier with the angled foregrip, just like you had planned all along. Oh, and that swanky new weapon skin that you just bought with $500,000 of your hard-earned battlefield money, it can't be used on the M1 either. Only the bronze, silver and gold camos are available for this one. So as an overall conclusion of the M1, it's a semi-auto rifle that can deal a large amount of damage at closer to medium ranges. If you've got a fast and steady trigger finger, then the M1 is likely to be a good choice in those situations. But stray a little bit further away from your target and the M1's bad range starts to get in the way, forcing you to land loads of shots onto an enemy in order to take them out. The reload speed for the weapon is quick and gets you back into the action without much hassle. And the fact that you can serve in more ammo by not firing in full auto should mean that you'll probably find yourself reloading less. It's just a shame that there's a lack of attachments to customise a gun further, as it'd cater for more personal playing styles and probably get people to use the gun more. Their iron sights also do seem to sway a little bit at times, which can be a bit off-putting when you're aiming down sights. So that's all for this one folks, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to see loads more weapon guides and plenty more. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.